and um, um, so this is um, uh, today our special guest um, is uh, Elizabeth Ivan Ficconi, right? Uh, okay, so um, I just want to introduce Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth is originally from Glasgow, Scotland, but she's been living in Italy for the past 32 years, where she has been teaching English to all levels and and types of students for more than 25 years in Italy and abroad. Since 2001, she's been writing materials for an ELT publisher in an area, and since 2003, Elizabeth has been um, training Italian primary school teachers. She regularly organizes workshop and language improvement courses, many of which include clear methodology. Her main interest revolves around teaching um, a natural, useful language and using the latest technologies whenever possible. Okay, so um, uh, Elizabeth, just uh, would like to say thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. It's a real pleasure to have you with us today, uh, and um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Letizia. Can you hear me okay? Can everyone hear me? Good. Okay. Hello. As Letizia says, um, I live. Um, how many of the participants are from Italy? Is that okay? Yes. Can you see me? Okay. So, where are the other participants from? Write your country, please. Okay, a lot of Italian participants, I can see. Um, as I said, I live in a beautiful spot, a little town called Numana, in the province of Ancona, on the Adriatic coast. Very beautiful little town. I'm very lucky. Um, I'll move to my first. Can you see me OK? Can everyone see me? Mm. Some yes, some no. Mm. What's about now? Can you see me now? No. Well, maybe we have to go ahead, some of you maybe without video. So, okay, I can see lots of Italians from Bari, for example, lots of places. Okay, so um, thank you for coming along today. Um, if you look at the slide, the first slide, can you guess? the content we're looking at in the presentation today? Just by looking at my slide, what do you think it refers to? Any ideas? Write them in the text box. Hello, do we have problems? Are you having video and audio problems, or can everyone see and hear me? Sorry. Yes. But is everything and okay? I yeah, think go some on. people cannot uh, see me. Yes, uh, but probably I have to refresh the page, oh. but I can assure you that everything is okay. I can see you okay. perfectly and uh, can okay. hear you. We have also here, so I think okay. everything is okay. That's no fine. Go on. The people have problems can just refresh the page. Okay. Thank you. So um, I, I was asking you a question. If you look at my slide, my first slide, um, what do you think we're looking at today? What's the content of our presentation? Do you understand? What do you think? Any ideas? Can you answer? Any clues? What do you think it's about? Look at the picture. Uh, 
the background content, look at my picture. I love this picture. N no one's answering. <laughs> so anyway, we're looking at, um, I wanted to show you a project that I've carried out in certain schools in my area. Um, mainly primary schools, but also middle school in Italy. So, because middle school teachers came along to my TESOL presentation and they wanted to use it also in their schools and it worked. Okay, so the content behind this is um, the C, okay? That's why you can see the bubbles and in the picture the girl with the ladder climbing up, okay, to improve her English, reaching for the stars, and the sea in the background. Um, it's a science project. So first of all, why clue? So we have some questions answered here. So including content in lessons makes them more interesting and contributes to children's social, cognitive, and psychological development children's knowledge and understanding of the world increases and at the same time they develop the ability to use language as a tool with which to investigate, analyze and describe the world. Learning the foreign language is not isolated from other areas of the curriculum. So this is really the main aim. How does CLO work in the classroom? through the organization of the syllabus and learning based on topics from other areas of the curriculum. Topics provide opportunities for meaningful experiential learning that appeals to different intelligences and different lifestyle, uh, learning styles Sorry, through the organization of the syllabus and learning based on stories. Through the use of content-based activities from other areas of the curriculum that relate or fit into an existing language-based syllabus. Activities should be purposeful and should include opportunities for investigative, factual inquiry and for creative, imaginative work. Okay, so we organized a project and uh, here are some lessons in the life of a primary school school teacher. So, we started with a song um, and the project was concerning the sea. So the question we asked was, is a seahorse a horse? Then we went on to an underwater legend, then on to seashells and to creating an underwater environment. So today I'm just going to show you our experience. The song we used was Octopus's Garden um, by a famous um, singer from the Beatles. Do you remember his name? Does anyone know this song? And do you know the name of the person who wrote the song and performed it? Any ideas? You can write in the text box. No? Okay, it was Ringo Starr. He was the Beatles drummer. Does anyone remember him? Uh, yeah, your dad. Obviously, you're too young, some of you. Okay. Um, yes, it's a very nice song. And I did find a video on YouTube to go with it. But this link on my slide no longer works. This video was removed. But it was a really nice video. But I'm sure you can find others. And uh, the children loved this song, and it showed the, the octopus in his environment, and also in his garden, which is wonderful, on the seabed. OK, so back to our project. Um, the question we asked the children was, is a seahorse a horse? Okay, strange, but 
Um, very nice. And this question came from the fact that they have gone to, the children had gone to visit a water park in Italy called Oltremare, um, which is in Rimini in Italy. So they had a wonderful experience, of course. They loved it. And uh, as you know, children are fascinated by, anim by sea animals and their habitats. They were keen to learn more but everything connected with this theme. So we took full advantage of this visit. So I'll just go back a second. The project was part of a main science project in which the pupils were involved over the school year in question. Its aim was to offer the pupils a new experience in which they were able to explore the amazing world of nature through the medium of the English language. So again, they were taken on a trip to Oltremare, a water park. And I'm sure there are water parks in your area too, where the children could, could, could go and visit. So, OK, we, obviously, when we create a project, we're interested in certain goals. So first, the formative goals. Um, and CLIL is fantastic for this, to encourage investigation to collect, analyze, interpret, and record information, to contribute to group work, to promote collaborative learning within the class, to be able to get around problems, to be able to use different tools, media, and particularly ICT. So it's, um, it, it's a wonderful um, project. Linguistic goals to understand written texts downloaded from the internet, taken from books or magazines for children, to be able to select material and take notes, to be able to use the foreign language to label pictures, write simple descriptions, and create a story which could then be performed. So some of you are having audio problems. Um, so you can see the slides. I hope you can read from the slides. OK. Methods and procedure. Um, of course, if any of you want to have um, any, anything to do connected to the project, if you'd like to receive, um, just write to me. My email address will be at the end. And you can write to me. And I'll send you anything necessary. OK? So methods and procedure, cooperative learning, OK, methods, cooperative learning, um, autonomous learning, community language learning, active learning, and scaffolding. So community language learning emphasizes the sense of community in the learning group. It encourages interaction as a vehicle for learning. And it considers as a priority the students' feelings and the recognition of struggles in language acquisition. There's no syllabus or textbook to follow. And it's the students themselves who determine the content of the lesson by means of meaningful conversations in which they discuss real messages. Given, obviously, we, we gave them um, the, 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 um, the language to use, we gave them the topic, and the children worked in groups. Um, so about scaffolding as well, um, again, the children are working together, and they're building on prior knowledge. And uh, what they know, they're making it, the consolidating, building on, on their prior knowledge. and um, learning more. OK. Cognition, community, content, communication. So working in groups, learning new content, and communicating together. OK. The project um, timing was four weeks. And the organization, whole class group work and individual work. 
So, um, as I said before, we put the children into groups, and obviously within the groups, some children are stronger than others. So, some individual work is also is also done. Okay, in order to help children work easier on the project, we planned a language learning path. So, as always in Clue, um, language items are as black words. So, in this case, we had the parts of the body of the seahorse. Eye, body, snout, prehensile tail, bony skeleton. And of course, the grammar used, it has got, it looks like, can look forward, backward, hold on to, and then it's so many centimeters long, etc. So, very nice. That was the language path. Procedure. We started the project by asking the children questions about their experience in the water park. What can you say about your trip to Ultramari? What's Ultramari? What can you say, what can you see in this water park? What kind of animals live in Ultramari, etc.? So, when we came back from Ultramari, we made the children speak about their experience and what they'd seen, etc. The children were then put into groups and they were asked to create a mind map about Ultramari. So, here it is. Um, the children created this mind map the things that they saw there. So, Ultramari is in Riccione, it's a water park. They saw dolphins, other animals, birds, crocodiles, fish, bugs, turtles. At Ultramari there is also a farm, so they got to see also other animals. Then they got to see 3D movies, in, this case, in their case about dinosaurs. So, it was very nice. Okay, continuing the procedure. Afterwards, each group spoke about their mind maps and wrote down a very simple paragraph about it. Ultramari is a water park in Riccione. You can see dolphins and other animals, such as birds, crocodiles, fish, bugs, turtles, etc. There's a farm too, where you can spend some time. In the water park, you can also watch amazing 3D movies about dinosaurs. It's great fun. So, the language is simple. The children wrote down what they can see, what they, what you can see at a water park. Okay? And the farm, etc. As most children were interested in seahorses, we decided to work on them. Um, we attached a colored picture of a seahorse on the board and wrote the following question above it. Is a seahorse a horse? We continued by asking other questions. For example, why is it called in this way? Does it really look like a horse? If yes, how is it similar to a horse? Um, Nelly, um, you're saying young learners. Um, yes, they were primary school learners in Italy, um, fourth class and fifth class. But as I said before, some teachers from the middle school in Italy have also carried out this project. Okay, this was, these were the pictures we showed the children on the board. We showed the children the following pictures uh, um, and, they, and asked them to discuss similarities and differences between the two animals. So, um, as you can see, Strangely enough, there are a lot of similarities. So these were the two nice pictures we showed. Um, and these are the, the results of their discussion. As you can see, similarities. Their bodies have the same shape. Their necks are long. And their snouts look the same. Both have got a long tail. And then, of course, 
differences. So the seahorse's body is hard outside, whereas the horse is covered with a furry skin. The seahorse has got a dorsal fin. The horse has got a mane. The horse has got a hairy tail. They live in different habitats. The seahorse underwater and the horse on land. So these were the things that we um, discussed with the children. Okay, afterwards we provided the children with the following pictures and asked them to focus their attention on the animal's eyes. This was really nice as well. Um, we asked, two of these animals have eyes which move in the same way. Can you guess which ones they are? So here we have a chameleon, the horse and the seahorse. So in your opinion, teachers, um, which of these animals have eyes that move in the same way? Can you guess and write in the text box for me? So two have eyes which move in the same way. Let's see. Yes, of course, you're right. Chameleons and seahorses' eyes move independently from each other. The right eye can look forward while the left eye looks back. In this way, seahorses can save themselves from predators. Okay, very important for the seahorses. Okay, step five in the procedure. In this step, we focused the children's attention on the parts of a seahorse's body. We showed them a picture, taught them the scientific words, the black words in Clue, and labeled the parts of the body. Thank you, everyone. You're all very clever. You got them all correct. OK, this was the picture we showed. So, and taught the children the black words. Eyes, snout, keel, bony skeleton, hard outer body covering. Pectoral fin, dorsal fin, prehensile tail. Okay, so these are the black words. As, in clue, uh, as you know, in clue we have the black words, which are the, the words which are connected um, directly to the topic. Okay? Now, an activity I did was, um, after teaching um, the words, I gave them the worksheet like this. I removed um, the terms, and the children had to then go back and fill in the terms into the correct gaps. OK, so this was nice as well. And they were repeating and revising and, and therefore memorizing the terms. OK, so we then went on to the classification uh, of the animal. So as you can see, animal kingdom, bony fish, family pipefish, the genus hippocampus, the horse sea monster in Greek, and then OK, a seahorse is a small fish. It has a hard outer body covering called a bony skeleton. It hasn't got scales. There are about 50 different species of seahorses around the world. OK, this is about the habitat and their anatomy. So habitat, it lives in seaweed in warm water. It can't swim very fast. It can change its color in order to hide from its enemies. So also in this way, it's similar to the chameleon because it can change color. Seahorses have a long horse-like head called a hens and a prehensile tail. A seahorse's tail is very important for its survival because it is used like a hand. It helps the seahorse hold on to sea plants 
while it looks for food. It also helps them to hold on to each other. As you can see in the nice picture, they hold on with their tail to plants and they can hold on to each other too. The children absolutely loved this project, I can assure you. Reproduction, very interesting. The female seahorse produces eggs, but they are held inside the male's body until they hatch. He is pregnant for about 40 to 50 days. A male pregnancy is unique to the seahorse. So, then another interesting point. Oh, I'm so happy you're enjoying this, Nelly. <laughs> okay. I'm not speaking about theory today, just a practical project. So it's interesting. I didn't know before this project about the male pregnancy. Okay, so it's interesting. Okay. Um, at the end, the children become teachers. So, and this is the evaluation section. At the end of the project, the children were asked to talk about their PowerPoint presentation. They planned a science lesson on seahorses and explained everything they'd learnt about the theme to their fellow students. So everything you saw before, the children put that into PowerPoint presentation and presented it to their fellow students. The results were extremely positive and their motivation raised considerably. The children have achieved a good fluency in English and learned how to do research by using authentic material. Um, now, in the particular primary school where this was first um, carried out, uh, the teachers there are fantastic teachers like yourselves, very motivated, very focused on um, always improving, and uh, so very good teachers very close to their pupils and so it, it was a great um, project and the pupils who leave that school always go on to do really well so they're lucky okay of course time for fun at the end of the project just for fun the children decided to create a short story the story was put onto PowerPoint and finally performed and it, it was really nice so this is the children's short story. In the wonderful world of underwater, two seahorses meet and become friends. Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name's Sandy, and you? I'm Simon. How old are you? I'm nine, and you? I'm nine too. Where do you live? In a cave in the bay. I live in the sea seaweed. Look, a shark. It's Sam. Mmm, my favorite food. <gasps> Come here, I want to eat you. Quick, let's hide in the seaweed. Blast! No more seahorses for lunch. Goodbye, Sam. We're safe now. And that's the end of the story. So, what do you think? Do you like it? Wonderful. I'm really happy. Um, yes, as Nelly said, the children did add voices and there, there was a bit more animation. Um, it, so it was really nice. Okay. But it was also very simple. Um, but the children did learn a lot. So it was really great. So um, I wanted to share that with you because 
um, just I know that everyone has their own ideas about how to use Clil, but I just thought it was a really um, nice project. Okay. Okay. After that, um, okay. I come from Scotland. Uh, I've been living in Italy for many years, 32 years. So um, what I did was I connected this um, to a legend, okay? The legend of the Kelpie, the water pony. Um, it's a Scottish legend. And uh, so I thought I could connect it to some culture uh, from my country, okay? So, okay, the Celtic water horse. The Kelpie water horse is a creature that traditionally inhabits Scottish streams and rivers. In its horse form, it might water near a river or a loch to tempt a weary traveler into riding it across to the other side. It looks like a gentle pony, but anyone foolish enough to mount one of these Celtic spirits is carried off into the water and drowned. It can shapeshift into the human form whenever necessary, leaping up behind solitary travelers and frightening them to death. However, the Kelpie's favorite shape is that of a young horse, and its favorite trick is to lure travelers onto its back and then dive with them into a deep river or a loch. When it hits the water, its tail makes a sound like thunder. And then the Kelpie vanishes in a flash of lightning. It is believed the poor unfortunate victim is there then torn to pieces and devoured. So um, the kids love this type of story. And obviously, this is a bit more difficult. This works more with middle school students, even older students. So that's what the Kelpie is. That's the legend of the Kelpie. So I thought I could connect it to the Seahorse Project. A couple of pictures of the Kelpie taken from the net, obviously. Um, so of course, the children love scary stuff as Maria Luisa Venuti says, yeah, it's, it's, um, so they really liked this idea. And, and it goes into my personal culture because I'm from Scotland. So a story from my, um, my background. Okay. And here we have a Celtic design of a Kelpie. Again, from my culture. As I said before, if uh, you can write to me, write to me in an email, and I will send you anything that you wish to have. Okay? I love this Celtic design. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, and then I took the project further. And uh, in these pictures, you have um, two wonderful sculptures that you can see in Scotland today. If you go today to Scotland, you can see these sculptures. And they are called the Kelpies. So they were given um, this, uh, the name because of the legend. And they were chosen um, to commemorate the very hard work done by working horses on the River Clyde, on the Clyde and Forth Canal, um, on the River Clyde in particular during the, the times of the shipbuilding industry, which was very big in, in, uh, in Scotland, the area between, around Glasgow and Port Glasgow. So River Clyde, C-L-Y-D-E. OK, these particular sculptures are located in a town called Falkirk. OK, Falkirk in Scotland. 
Falkirk is um, a town between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, they are truly amazing. And you can go and you can look at this website, thehelix.co.uk, discover Helix the Kelpies. You can um, go and look at the, the, the actual um, sculptures and read about them. Okay. So again, I found a way of connecting the Seahorse Project with some culture in Scotland and, and with something actual today, current in Scotland. Okay, so um, this link, uh, you will get my email address at the end and I will send you the slides and everything you need. Okay, just write to me. Okay, so with this project, you can incorporate different things, which, which I thought was really interesting. Okay, and I can tell you, it's tried and tested, it's proven, and it really did work, and it was a really good um, experience. Then, of course, if you want to extend the, the topic of the sea, you can go on to um, seashells, which I, I included with the primary children. So this is about the mollusks, seashells, and we looked at the different types. Belong to the kingdom mollusca. Most mollusca are soft, fleshy, slug-like creatures that have a hard external skeleton-like structure to help protect them. Mollusca can be found in both salt and fresh water, as well as on the land snails, for example. In the oceans, this structure is known as a seashell. So, okay. And this is um, classification of seashells, different shapes. The children liked this as well, and they did a lot of drawings as well of the various seashells. The shell families different things we looked at. Also from Learning English Kids British Council, there are word games, label the pictures, sea animals. Nice, interesting, but I'll send you the slides with all the links. Okay, and here there is a, a topic web. Okay, um, I couldn't use the animation, so I'll show you the each separate um, topic, okay? So, because it won't work from here. So, is a seahorse a horse? Okay, there's the language, the ICT, art and craft, music, science, all the different things involved, okay? So, um, Nelly, um, Letizia told me that that it wouldn't work, the animation. So go to each individual page. So science, identifying the characteristics of sea creatures, identifying food and habitat, identifying seashells, and special features of seahorses. These were all the various things involved in the project. Okay, so I don't no, that won't work. So I'll just move on to the next page. Language. Labeling pictures of seahorses. Writing or completing descriptions of seahorses. Creating a story about seahorses. Telling a story about a mythological sea creature. Okay, so the language was involving all of these things. Then. ICT, using the internet to download information on seahorses and to create a story and writing a story based on PowerPoint. Um, sorry, writing a storyboard on PowerPoint, using PowerPoint to write a storyboard. Okay, yes, uh, absolutely, multidisciplinary work. That's why I love Quill so much. Art and craft, um, making a cutout mobile, 
making a model of an underwater environment and making a mini book. So these were further um, activities, art and craft activities that could be done. So the pictures, pictures of the seahorses, of the shells, of other sea creatures made into a mobile, obviously for the younger children. Making an, a model of an underwater environment, again, um, very good for the younger primary school children. Making a mini book was also lovely for them. Music, okay, singing songs about the sea. We, as I showed you before, we had um, a Ringo Starr, um, Octopus's Garden. But then you can find many other songs about the sea so that you could use, even very simple ones or even from your textbooks that you use in school. I'm sure your textbooks often have, have songs connected to the sea as well. So, okay. Hi, Mary. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm making music with shells. That, that was nice, yes. Um, that was a nice activity. You can find these activities on, on the web. If you look on, on internet, you can find an activity from making music with shells. So it was really nice. Um, some useful websites. Um, again, a, if you, I will send you the slides. Write, write, my, write to me, okay? Or I'll, I'll get, I don't know, Nelly to, to leave it on your platform for for all of you. Um, these are just some websites. Google.com Cultural Institute, which is good for many different subjects. Um, NHM, that's the Natural History Museum. You can visit with your classes and get some ideas. Learning English Kids British Council, obviously excellent. So these are, are, are some websites that could be useful. But as I've said, write me an email and I'll send you the links. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, so I'm Elizabeth Evans. And in Italy, Elizabeth Evans Ciccone, because I'm married to Mr. Ciccone. And my email address is very simple. I live in Numana, and I come from Glasgow. So it's numanaglasgow at gmail.com. So if anyone wants to write to me, feel free. Okay? If you want to ask, I don't know if we have time, how, how we place for time yeah I think we're okay if anyone wants to ask any questions uh, do so just write your questions in the text box and I'm willing to answer I hope you've been enjoyed it thank you to all of you for coming And now I'm looking at, at, the, at the box and I can see how many people there are. Because I didn't look before, so I wasn't able to follow. So many of you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. That's too much from you too much <laughs> oh dear does anyone want to ask any questions so what is the best any questions no questions okay Can you hear me Ah, no question. Okay, how long does it take to do these activities? Um, the basic project of the seahorses, um, we did it over four weeks in a primary school, over a period of four weeks, working on the actual language and ICT and everything. So, 
Oh, thank you, everyone. You're so kind. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I missed any of the questions, Letizia. Um, were the parents involved? No, not really. No. So, not really. Yes, I'll send everyone the slides if you send me an email. Uh, no, the children can also use L1. A lot of English, but also L1 is, is, is used in certain moments. But a lot of English was used. Okay. Uh, can you have other projects? Um, write me an email and uh, I'll give you some other ideas. Okay. Uh, yes, they were done in class, um, in groups, working groups, and and uh, yep, and individuals. Yep. Thank you, thank you, Sara Maria. Wonderful. Um, sorry, homework. Um, most we we try to do everything in in school. Uh, with them, okay? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I know we preferred for the children to work in school together and um, collaboratively. Um, about history, yes, I do have other projects connected to history. So, if you if you want to send me an email, we can I can give you something else. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. Okay, shall we close now, Thank you. Or thank you for your shall I don't know what should we do? <laughs> can you hear me? Thank you to everyone. You're so kind. Can you hear me? Anything you want, write to me, okay? Can you hear me now? Okay, bye everyone. Can you bye. Hear me? Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Cool. I keep forgetting to look into the camera. <laughs> so it is the bed. Bye. And thanks. Thanks for all. Thanks for your inspired uh, suggestions and uh, uh, for your ideas. Bye, bye everyone. And uh, just want to remind that the slides will be available on on the usual. Okay, so you will find Elizabeth's uh, slides on the Facebook group, and um, the material is always available after each webinar. So thanks again, Elizabeth, for accepting our invitation and for your inspiring ideas and uh, suggestions. Bye. Um, hello, can you still hear me?